All right, so I figured since there's so much controversy around Little Mermaid, I wanted to do a little digging and find the actual original story of the Little Mermaid. And we're going to go through this and see what she looked like and f find out the true story. So without further ado, let us begin. Now this is the original one I picked up from Wikipedia and the Little Mermaid is found by the prince in an illustration by Edmund Dulock. The author is Hans Christian Andersen and the original title is Denly Havre. I don't know if I'm saying that correct, but whatever. The country it was um, originated from is Denmark. The language was Danish. Janeer was fairy tale. The publisher was C.A. Ritzel. Publication date was April 7th, 1837. Now it had been adapted to various media, including musical theater, anime, ballet, opera, and a Disney animated film. There is also a statue portraying the mermaid in Copenhagen, Den Denmark, where the story was written and first published. And so begins the story of the Little Mermaid. <laughs> the Little Mermaid lives in an underwater kingdom with her widowed father, the Sea King of Mer King, her dowager grandmother, and her five older sisters, each of whom had been born one year apart. When a mermaid turns 15, she is permitted to swim to the surface for the first time to glimpse the world above. And when the sisters become old enough, each of them visit the upper world, one at a time, every year. As she returns, the little mermaid listens longly to the various descriptions of the world inhabited by humans. When the little mermaid's turn comes, she rises up to the surface, watches a birthday celebration being held on a ship in honor of a handsome prince, and falls in love with him from a safe distance. A violent storm hits, sinking the ship and the mermaid saves the prince from drowning. She delivers him unconscious to the shore near a temple. Here she waits until a young woman from the temple and her ladies-in-waiting find him. To her dismay, the prince never sees the little mermaid or even realizes that it was she who had originally saved his life. The little mermaid becomes melancholic and asks grandmother if humans can live forever. The grandmother explains that humans have a much shorter lifespan than a mermaid's 300 years, but that when mermaids die, they turn to sea foam and cease to exist, while humans have an eternal soul that lives on in heaven. The little mermaid, longing for the prince and an eternal soul, visits the sea witch in a dangerous part of the ocean. The witch willingly helps her by selling her a potion that gives her legs in exchange for her tongue and beautiful voice. As the little mermaid has the most enchanting voice in the world, the witch warns the little mermaid that once she becomes a human, she will never be able to return to the sea. Consuming the potion will make her feel as if a sword is being passed through her body. Yet when she recovers, she will have two human legs and will be able to dance like no human has ever danced before. However, she will con constantly feel as if she is walking on sharp knives and her feet will bleed terribly. In addition, she will obtain a soul only if she wins the love of the prince and marries him, for then a part of his soul will flow into her. Otherwise, at dawn on the first day after he marries someone else, the little mermaid will die with a broken heart and dissolve into sea foam upon the waves. After she agrees to the arrangement, the little mermaid swims to the surface near the prince's palace and drinks the potion. She is found by the prince, who is mesmerized by her beauty and grace. Even though she is mute, most of all, he likes to see her dance, and she dances for him despite suffering excruciating pain with every step. 
Soon the Little Mermaid becomes the prince's favorite companion and accompanies him on many of his outings. When the prince's parents encouraged their son to marry the neighboring princess in an arranged marriage, the prince tells the little mermaid he will not because he does not love the princess. He goes on to say he can only love the young woman from the temple, who he believes rescued him. It turns out that the princess from the neighboring kingdom is the temple girl. As she was sent to the temple for her education, the prince declares his love for her and the royal wedding announced at once. The prince and princess celebrate their new marriage on a wedding ship and the little mermaid's heart breaks. She thinks of all that she can and has sacrificed, all the pain she endured for the prince. She despairs thinking of the death that awaits her. But before dawn, her sisters rise out of the water and bring her a knife that the sea witch has given them in exchange for their long, beautiful hair. If the little mermaid kills the prince and lets his blood drip on her feet, she will become a mermaid once more. All of her suffering will end and she will live out her full life in the ocean with her family. However, the little mermaid cannot bring herself to kill the sleeping prince lying with his new bride and she throws the knife and herself off the ship into the water just as dawn breaks her body dissolves into foam but instead of ceasing to exist she feels the warm sun and discovers that she has turned into a luminous and eternal earthbound spirit a daughter of the air as the little mermaid ascends into the atmosphere she is greeted by other daughters who tell her she has become like them because she strove with all her heart to obtain a mortal soul because of her selfness she is given the chance to earn her own soul by doing good deeds for mankind for 300 years and will one day rise up into the kingdom of god okay so it doesn't explain you know what the little mermaid look like but we can tell she's part fish and we all know what fish look like um so with that being said she could be any she could be rainbow color for all we know so it really doesn't matter you know who now the original story is a heartbreaking tragic um love story now the controversy comes because um from both sides um, because she was a red-haired um, Caucasian woman but in all reality Ariel wasn't that at all she was actually part fish so I would definitely have to get an actual real mermaids view on this with that being said Ar anyone anyone can play Ariel because Ariel is not a human she's not a specific race but what she is is a specific species a fish species me, myself, I personally would want to see the actual original movie um, played out. But then that story is not too kid friendly as I am into tragic romance. I absolutely think no matter what race she is, um, someone's always going to see something wrong with it. As in life, someone's always going to hate something or have a problem with something. Um, and that's just the world that we live in. I also believe Hale does have the vocal range to play this part um, because it, her, her vocal range is so wide. And that's not to say that no one else does, but um, for what they found, and I, I imagine she had to audition, um, she probably won over the uh, casting crew. So, and then people are even saying in the comments, um, what if a black woman played Ta Tatiana from Princess and the, the Frog. Um, Tatiana was actually, uh, at, that story was after an actual real person that had to endure the, what most um, African Americans had to endure um, during that time. So that probably wouldn't fare too well for, you know, a Caucasian person to play that part. But I don't know, what do you guys think about all this? 
um, go off in the comment section. Alrighty, I will uh, see you later, okay? Bye-bye. You've arrived. Finally.